On this episode of Retro Car Guy 530, I'm going to test a couple of different power adapters for a dash camera to see how the low voltage monitoring protection feature works as far as how accurate it is before it cuts off the power to the dash camera. And I'm gonna be using the equipment on the desk here, a varying power supply, some power monitoring tools to help illustrate the, the particular fact and see how accurate they are. So let's get into it. I'd like to go through the equipment that I'll be using in today's video to demonstrate the power monitoring and voltage cutoff features of the power adapters for the USB powered dash cameras that I'm going to be testing. First one is a variable voltage power supply. I have wires going out to a fuse box here with some fuse taps with, and a simulated ignition switch here with a toggle switch. I have an Innova power monitor which plugs into a power port so if you have a constantly supplied power port and unswitched power Basically, it's powered all the time. You can plug this in to monitor the battery voltage in the vehicle as the camera draws power and eventually the power monitor should cut off power to that camera. You can monitor this pretty easily just by looking in the car. And then with the fuse box, I'm doing, using these fuse taps, which I have a couple of videos on my channel related to fuse taps and FAQs for fuse taps. I'll put some links up uh, on the top corner of the video and down in the description section of the video. And I'm supplying the power from the power supply through this red cable over to the input lead. Since I don't have an ignition switch here from a vehicle, I'm simulating the ignition or switch power or accessory power, depending on the terminology, with this toggle switch. So I have a fuse tap getting constant power, then I'm turning it into switch power here. And then I have another fuse tap that's supplying just constant power, assuming that the output from the power supply is active, which it isn't quite yet. To do that, I again, I'll be varying the voltage. I have the max amperage, which is a feature of this particular power supply set to two amps because most dash cameras are well under one amp in single channel configurations. It's like in the 150 to 300 milliamp or 0.15 to 0.3 amps. So in that case, any fuse greater than two or two and a half amps is probably overkill. I have five amps here as a fairly typical size for most dash camera configurations when you receive them from the seller. So make sure you don't get too large of a fuse here because you're trying to protect the wiring and the dash camera and having a too large of a fuse isn't protecting anything. In fact, it could be a a fire hazard, especially if you're putting an extremely large fuse in for something that only draws a little bit. If it starts getting cut through the wiring, gets the insulation gets cut and it has a short, that could be a problem. So make sure you size your fuses appropriately. So I've got the variable power supply, I've got the power monitor, I've got the fuse box, which I'll move out of the way here in just a minute, and I've got the two power leads here. I have my ground going back to my power supply. Now if you don't have this voltage monitor, which I'll turn on the power right now, we have nothing connected. We'll see this turn on and it should match up pretty closely with the voltage on here. There was then usually a hundredth of a volt here and that way you can, like I said, monitor the voltage in your vehicle. So I'll leave that on in this particular case. If you don't have one of those, you could use a regular old digital volt, voltage multimeter like this where you can use the probes to you know, check out the voltage. And, you know, but you'd have to go out periodically. Let me get that connected here. 12.5 volts. So that's another approach for testing that out. It just so happens that I have the power monitor here that I can plug into the power port. It's a little bit easier for the visual display here while I'm testing it. But this is another valid approach. You just have to, like I said, periodically go out and check the voltage on your vehicle and see if the dash camera is still on to verify where your particular power monitor uh, power adapter for your dash camera actually cuts off the voltage. I'm going to, like I said, vary the voltage here. It has the feature of major voltage jumps of one volt at a time. And I'm gonna bring it back to 12 and then I have hundredths of a volt here. So I'll be using that to adjust the voltage and I'll be doing it in steps. And letting it set for about two minutes at each voltage level to allow the voltage monitor a fair chance to see the voltage level at a stable voltage for a period of time. Usually it takes about 90 to 100 seconds for it to see it at a voltage level below the selected value on the voltage monitor, usually within 0.1 volt of the selected value. I'll do some time lapse through that to speed it up. And that's the premise of today's test. So let's get into the test. I'm now going to test this three wire power adapter, the HK3 from Viafo with this A129 Pro front camera, which is a 4K capable camera. I have the power supply set to 12.6 volts 
and once I turn on the switch there, it will start supplying power to the camera and that will boot up. The HK3 is currently set to 12.4 volts as its cutoff voltage. I'll decrease the voltage through the power supply, then I'll let it set out for two minutes. I'll go through those sections in time-lapse mode so you can see them a little bit more quickly in this video. But you'll see that it does step down and get down to the 12.4 and then I have to go down below that to get it to cut off. But it is within 0.1 volt of the actual selected value. I have repeated this test a few times with the various selections for voltage cutoff values on the HK3 both at the 12.4, 12.2, 12.0, and the 11.8. So I've now just cut off the power from the ignition switch. It's now switched the camera into parking mode. And then with that, once that settles down for just a few moments, I'll start decreasing the voltage here from 12.6. I'll bring it down to 12.50 and let that settle out. I'll leave it at that voltage level for two minutes, approximately each voltage level selection, and that will give the HK3 ample time to see that the voltage level has stabilized. And once it considers it to be below the selected value, it will then cut off the voltage to the camera at that point. So I've just dropped it to 12.4. And again, we're going to go through that two minute period. And right now I have the HK3 set at 12.4 volts. So you might think that it might start cutting off the voltage here, but it doesn't quite yet. So I'm going to decrease it here by five hundredths of a volt here to see if that's enough. And I'm going to give it two minutes to settle out here as well. The HK3 is reported to have a 0.1 volt tolerance level between the selected value. So it could be minus 0.1 or plus 0.1. And right now 0.5 below is still not quite enough. So I'm going to go ahead and decrease it to 12.3 volts here and then give it the two minute settle period. But this time we should see it actually cut off the voltage to the camera, power to the camera, because I'm gonna let it settle in between 90 and 100 seconds, it actually will cut off the power to the camera. And that was repeatable at all the selectable voltage cutoff values for the HK3. In this listing, you can see on the left are the selected values on the HK3, and then on the right are the actual voltage levels that it cut the power off at. It did take that subtle time about 90 to 100 seconds before it would cut off the power to the camera. But now you're aware of where that will cut off, at least for the HK3, and in general for this type of power adapter for a dash camera. The next test I'm going to be running is to prove that the HK3 will not restore power to the camera until the ignition switch is turned on. I'm going to restore the voltage from the power supply to 12.6. You can see that it's still drawing about 10 milliamps, the 0.01 amps, and that's it monitoring the voltage. But the camera will not get power until I turn on that ignition switch here, which I will wait through a three minute settling period here just to prove the fact that I'm waiting long enough for the HK3 to detect the voltage level. And we're gonna go through this time lapse here of the three minute period just to prove that the camera does not actually turn back on until the ignition switch is turned on. This is just to prove that the HK3 is doing its job and it's waiting for the ignition switch signal to the power on the accessory circuit coming in to restore power to the camera. I'm now going to turn on the ignition switch power and the HK3 should send power to the camera. We see the amp draw is a little higher on the power supply. It's at 150 milliamps at this point. The camera's going through its five second boot delay. And once that completes, the A129 Pro should boot up and the screen should come on. So that confirms the HK3 is performing as prescribed. So that completes this test. I also recently completed a similar test on a Blue Sky CB4K dash camera in a review that I performed on that camera. The voltage cutoff was about 0.1 volt below the selected value as well, but it seemed to react a little bit quicker than the HK3, but they both performed the correct thing at cutting out the voltage within 0.1 volt of the selected value. The purpose of this video was to demonstrate the fact that the power monitoring features in some of these dash camera power adapters were a feature sometimes included in the camera itself to monitor the input voltage from the car's battery. And when it goes below a pre-selected value, it will turn off the camera or cut off power to the camera, such as we saw in this particular video. The selected value isn't necessarily exactly where it turns off the power. So make sure you're aware of that because you don't want to get your battery to run too low, especially if you're going to be selecting one of the lower voltage levels on one of these devices. I don't recommend going below 12.0 volts at a minimum. I typically set these to 12.2. As we saw in this particular video, that actually means 12.1. And that was true for both the Viafo HK3 power adapter and also for the Blue Sky CB4K adapter that I reviewed in a previous video. 
course, there is another option here, and that's to get a dash camera battery pack that will supply power to the dash camera while in parking mode. It completely removes the draw off your vehicle's battery and puts it on the battery pack itself. It's a great alternative, but it is far more expensive than using one of these power adapters or one of the dash cameras that include the internal feature to cut off the power at the pre-selected voltage level. But it's something to consider, and I've reviewed some of those on my channel before, so you might want to check those out. Hopefully you found the information in this video helpful. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and make sure you hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload new videos like this one to the channel. There will be links in the description section for my affiliate links for tools that I used in this particular video. Check out my Amazon Influencer Store, also the link down in the description section. And thanks for coming to the channel and checking out this video. See you in the next one.